Bella. You ruined it. Oh, that's a good one to start on. All right, what's up guys? I'm Colby. Um, we're gonna answer some of the Instagram questions you sent over the other day. So we're gonna go upstairs and talk to the man, Kurt. What's going on, Kurt? How you doing? Good, you mind if we bug you for a couple minutes no, here? No, please, come on up. Cool. Um, so, we're gonna go over some of the Instagram questions we got from um, all you folks last week or the week before that. Kurt's got a list of the, the big, big items on the questions there. Um, I'm sure we'll do a couple follow-up episodes of this where we'll answer some of those other questions, but we're gonna start out with the most popular ones, so. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. So the most popular one by far was, uh, when can we expect the Stone Glacier Gators? That's for me. Um, so Gators, right now we're playing on April 15th. We'll have them in our hands, so I think you guys can plan on seeing them on the website May 1st. All right, moving on, number two. Uh, are there more colors coming in the M7 set? And yes, there are. Uh, we're planning a brown tan range. We don't have the exact color set, but we will be offering that for next year. And quite a few questions on the M7. Uh, is the M7 rain gear light enough to pack with? And yes, it is quite light. It's not designed as a packable piece. It's designed more as your primary outer layer. Um, so the M5 is going to be a better option for a packable piece, say in August, early season, actually all the way into late season. But if, if you're going to be hunting in the snow, using the pants and the jacket as your primary outer piece, the M7 is going to be your choice. And next one along the same lines, why didn't you line the M7 hood with fleece? And this was intentional because whenever it's snowing, rain, anything like that, if you don't have your hood pulled up all the way, the micro fleece on the inside could start to hold moisture yep. if snow or anything blows in there. So left the collar and yeah. the hood. I think that kind of plays into two. I know we were talking to some guys last week where they were asking, you know, what's, what's the most water resistant piece, the, the M7 or the M5? For example, if you're going to Alaska or something like that. Yeah. Um, would you recommend a guy going with an M5 versus an M7 for more waterproofness from one piece or the other? Are they the same? Or? Yes, yes. So the, the shell has the same waterproof material. It is the yeah. same waterproof material. The difference is in the insulating backer. So if you're on a coastal hunt, BC, uh, uh, Alaska, where you're seeing more rain, non-freezing temps, you're not in the snow all the time, the M5 is going to be your best choice. Uh, it's going to move the most moisture. Uh, you don't have to worry about any rain, snow blowing down from the inside. That's, that's the M5 is, is going to be, and it's a packable piece. It's a much more packable piece. And another point on that is that the M5 pants are designed to be packable and that they have full leg zips. Yep. So you can take them off over your boots. Uh, the M5 just has the vent zip down the side. So that's the piece you put on in the morning. You're wearing it all day, every day on your hunt. Perfect. Okay. And actually we just jumped into it. Uh, one more part on the M7 is uh, standalone late season pants. And yes, along those same lines, fleece backer. So you could wear it with a uh, merino base layer, whether it be even just shorts or uh, long johns. Um, it's nice next to skin, but it also has a room if you want to layer and go with the down pants underneath it as well. Yeah. Um, any plans for a lightweight hooded synthetic base layer? And the short answer is yes. <laughs> Highly demanded product from the uh, SG crew. So we're working on it. Yep, we're working on it. So patterns, prototyping, then we'll be testing and uh, getting it to you as soon as we can. Okay, why not have a belt-mounted bottle pouch? Uh, I'm assuming you like for an Nalgene. We don't have, I don't have a good reason for that. <laughs> we should have one, and we will have one. So actually, that's one of the good things that came out of this question. We started prototyping one last week. Uh, we're going to be getting it into production as soon as our slot will fit in. So you guys should be seeing something that will fit on our packs for a Nalgene-style water bottle soon. All right. The Grumman vest. I know I can't be the only one waiting. 
<laughs> and yes, yes, yeah, we are, we are moving forward with that. Uh, about half the staff here is also waiting. Yep. So soon. Um, now that SG has a full system, do I need to order different sizes to layer properly? Yep, and the answer to that is everything is sized to fit together. So when you take a look at the M7 pant, the M7 pant is made to be worn as an outer layer, same fit block as our de Havilland pants, both the light uh, and the standard de Havilland pant. And then you look at the M5 layer, that is designed to go over the top. So if you wear a large in either one of those, order a large in the M5, and that will fit over your large yeah. standard out, outer layer. That might be a good question to call out to what we talked about last week. We were kind of talking about the whole waist sizing thing and um, you know, how our, our sizing chart works. I know a lot of guys might look at it and see you know, one size is based on a 34 to 36 inch recommendation. Could you just maybe inform them what that's referencing, is it pant size or is it actual hip measurement? Yep, so that is actual hip measurement. Uh, so taking a measurement around your waist, yep. right where your belt line is, that measurement, cross-reference it to our chart and that will give you your exact size. Now, knowing that our size blocks will also have two and a half, two and three quarter inches of adjustment up or down. Yep. So once you're in that size, you can micro adjust it to get it to fit depending on whatever base layer you were putting on your winter weight. Yeah. Adjust it up a little bit. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, uh, looks like last one we have for right now, how does SG determine cubic inches, the volume of their packs? And so I do it using AutoCAD. That's what I do all my design work on. And so what I do is I figure out the, the, the perimeter of the pack in the different spots. So a pack isn't, even though they're two dimensional pieces, when they lay out, it looks like a square. It actually forms into more of uh, some sort of ellipse. And you figure out, of course, the perimeter, you figure out your square inches, and then I'll figure that out for each portion of the pack. And then I can multiply that times the height, and that will give you your volume of the main pack. Then similarly do uh, the pockets. However, with our pockets, I try to calculate that at a lower volume depending on the pocket. So take something like the lid, it'll be calculated at higher portion because it'll be more usable space. It's easier to get in and out of there. Uh, some of the side pockets, if you have them completely full, 100% volume, it's really not usable space. So I'll calculate that depending on how the pocket functions in between 50 and 70%. So then uh, you actually have usable space. Yeah. I hope that uh, brings some insight to your questions. Like I said, we'll probably do these weekly with Kurt or maybe bi-weekly. I'm not sure we've got on the schedule, but you'll definitely be hearing from Kurt more. So if you've got any more questions, please send them in. Um, thanks for watching.